Welcome to another Lifelong Learning Study Skills Workshop video. Today we're going to do another time management technique. Uh, this one's called the time chart or also known as a time schedule. Uh, feel free to take the time to write down my email address. Uh, later on I will be talking about the time schedule and how this works and I'd be more than happy to send you a blank copy of this um, if you go ahead and send me an email. So doug.panfalone at lakotaonline.com. Also feel free to follow me on Twitter uh, at Mr. Panfalone and I often will post things on Twitter, I'll tweet things out uh, with the hashtag study skills workshop. So let's go ahead and get this video started. The time schedule is a technique to help students manage their time. Um, some kids are involved in a lot of different sports, clubs, this, that, and the other, uh, and it makes it very challenging for the kids to get their homework done, to study, to adequately get sleep, so forth and so on. So this time schedule is basically a way for students to sit down, think about every activity that they're involved in. Some kids are involved in, you know, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, church, youth group. They're involved in sports, after school clubs, and we like to encourage students to get involved in all of those things. Um, however, at the same time, we also want them to prioritize and make sure that they set aside adequate time for homework and studying uh, daily review. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a little bit. The way this time schedule works is um, students will figure out which things are they involved in right now. So this kid, Brad, he was involved in Boy Scouts. He, he was a guitar player, which means he also took guitar lessons and he had to do daily practice. He's also involved in the school's uh, student council. And so what I had Brad do is sit down and write down all of those things and decide a color for each. So um, Boy Scouts is orange. So as you can see on Monday night there at 6.30 to 7.30, there was always a meeting. So he set that time aside knowing that that is not a time that he'll ever be able to use for homework or studying or anything else other than Boy Scouts. Uh, he did the same thing with his student council meeting after school on Wednesday. He also did the same thing for his guitar practicing daily, uh, as well as his guitar lesson that he had on Saturday, uh, Saturday morning. Once he identified everything that he was involved in and created a color and colored it on a schedule, now we go back and look at where are we going to insert the time for homework. Now, it depends on what student we're talking about right here. I'm a junior high teacher, so I typically ask my students to set aside an hour and a half, maybe two hours a day. Um, high school, that would be more. Elementary school, that would possibly be less. Um, especially at the lower grade levels, but in fifth and sixth, uh, an hour of homework uh, might be sufficient. Uh, either way, set that side of time. Uh, that, and here you can see that Brad decided that he wanted to come home. He had about 2.30 to 3, which you don't see on the schedule here, just to kind of relax and chill out. And at 3, he would immediately start his homework that he would have done prior to dinner. Um, of course, that had to change a little bit on Wednesday because of the student council meeting. And as you notice on the weekend, um, I usually tell the students, you need an hour and a half total over the course of the weekend. So that doesn't mean you need an hour and a half Friday night, an hour and a half Saturday, an hour and a half Sunday. A total of an hour and a half. So you could spread that out, 30, 30, 30, or you can do it all in one night like he did on Sunday night starting at 6.30. Um, that is totally up to, to students and how they, they wanted to do that. Um, and as you're going to see here, um, these events are reoccurring events. If, if Brad had a dentist appointment this Friday, he's not going to put this on a time schedule. He's going to put that in his planner, but he's not going to put this in his time schedule um, because that is not a reoccurring event. Um, the other thing you also notice is there's a lot of blank space, and that's what I try to show kids. Here's a kid that's involved in a variety of activities, plus he's set aside time for homework, and yet he still has a lot of free time. So I always tell students, you know, you can still have a life and enjoy your video games and hanging out with friends and doing this, that, and the other. But you also can get things done. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. What if my son or daughter comes home and they have 3 to 4.30 set aside and 30 minutes into it, they're completely done with their homework and it's done well. Then what? I would always encourage as a parent to have them use that time to read their novel or study because what I encourage students to do is daily review. In other words, just because there's not a quiz or test this week in social studies or in science or you know any given subject, they should still go home every day and review what they did in class. Look over those notes they took in social studies. Look at that lab that they completed during science class today um, as a ongoing review. So when we do have quizzes and tests, it's going to be a little bit easier in the study. So I would always encourage students to uh, use that time thoroughly and parents keep them accountable. Now, how can we also keep them accountable as parents is that we can require them to hang it up somewhere that is visible. 
uh, usually visible to the whole family would be even better. You know, put it on the fridge or the bulletin board in, in the kitchen or, or whatever. But it's got to be something that the kids see every day and they know the routine. And once they get in the routine, they might not necessarily look at the time schedule every day because they know what to do. Now, that time schedule will change. And that's one reason why I'm going to put the screen back up here in a little bit to show you what my email address is uh, so you can write that down. I'd be happy to... Uh, send you a blank copy that you can download to your desktop and anytime you need a new one you can print it off um, whenever a season change volleyball's over okay now you don't have volleyball practice and game days okay you need a new time schedule or hey I want to join this new club at school awesome but now you're gonna have a new time commitment so you're gonna have to make a new time schedule so I would encourage parents uh, to download that or, or students to download that to your computer that you can use this so here's the blank time schedule that, again, if you send me an email, I will send you an email back. Um, just ask for a time schedule, and I will send that to you. Download this to your desktop or some folder that you can access and uh, use this. Um, this actually also will be very beneficial during the summer. Now, of course, students need to take the time during the summer to chill out, relax, recharge your batteries. And so no, in no way would I encourage students to have to do tons and tons of homework and school related things during the summer but as parents I think it would be important to create a color-coded time chart or have the students create a color-coded time chart where they outline different activities they want to want to do some which would be school related like having students read 30 minutes a day I don't think that's asking too much for students to do and other things as you can see in this time schedule uh, that one of my students made um, they set aside time uh, to swim laps. They want to go to their neighborhood pool and make sure each day they swam for half an hour as a form of exercise. Um, just having the kids do this creates a sense of routine. So when we get back to school, kids are already in that, f that frame of mind of taking a look at their time, dividing it up, and as you can see, there's plenty of time on this chart for them to go out and have fun and doing, what, doing things that kids enjoy doing during the summer. Uh, but this is a great way to continue that habit throughout the summer uh, into the next school year. So thank you for taking the time to watch uh, another video from Lifelong Learning Study Skills Workshop. And again, if you go ahead and send me an email, I'll be happy to send you a blank copy of that time chart. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Thank you.